Reading Day Hillcrest, Hillcrest Elementary. Today I'm here to share some books that uh, I'm going to read aloud to you. I chose books that were all featured black authors and black characters for Black History Month since that starts on February 1st, which is about right about the time you guys are doing World Reader Out Loud Day. Look, words are not coming out of my mouth right right now. So um, this is a chapter book. Um, definitely uh, more of a middle grade novel, but this one just looks so cool to me. It's called Maya and the Rising Dark. And I wanted to share something that was like fantasy and cool because that's my favorite type of book to read. Um, and this one just looked super awesome. So this is um, by Rena, 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 Bart Baron. And um, it's called Maya and the Rising Dark. Um, I'll let you guys, I, sometimes I read the book jacket, but I, to give you guys a little description of it, but I'm just gonna jump right into it. And if you guys are intrigued, you can look it up later. So I know I'm gonna read at least one chapter. Yeah, I'm gonna read one chapter to give you guys a little preview. So here's what the book looks like. I like the little suns above the chapter header. Um, one, the day color bled from the world. Oh man, I'm already hooked. T minus five days. Five long and torturous days until school was out for the summer. Not a moment too soon either. My math teacher, Ms. Vanderbilt, kept me after school tutoring the whole year. She said I was gifted, but to be honest, I had no clue what she was talking about half the time. My brain felt as lumpy as the vanilla pudding they served in the cafeteria on Mondays. Practice makes perfect, Maya, Miss Vanderbilt chimed at her desk. Get to work. Yes, ma'am, I mumbled as I stared at the chalkboard. Only the top of her red fro po poked out from behind the tower of papers. If she didn't give so many quizzes, she would ha wouldn't have a stack of tests to grade that stretched, stretched from Chicago to L.A. Today, she had me working on situational math and had my head hurt just thinking about the, all the steps needed to solve the problem. She had written a recipe for candy apples and the price of ingredients. Apples, popsicle sticks, sugar, food coloring, corn syrup. I had to figure out how much it would cost to make 50 candy apples. This wasn't really rocket science, but math took time and focused, both of which I was short on. Ms. Vanderbilt got worked up about fractions and decimals the way my friend Frankie got excited about science projects. Now Frankie, she was a genius. She had the grades and IQ to prove it. But to me, math was about as interesting as watching paint dry, which was actually a thing I had to do for art class once. I glanced over my shoulder at the clock on the wall. 15 more minutes, then goodbye school, hello weekend. Papa was due back from his work trip. I bit my lip wondering if what he'd bring me this time. My favorite gift was the red and gold sash he swore belonged to the great Orisha Oya from my favorite comic book. Oya wasn't real, so of course the sash wasn't hers. Still, it was pretty and I wore it to school for a week straight. I dragged the chalk across the board, taking my sweet time. No way was I squeezing in another math problem before four o'clock. As long as Miss Vanderbilt heard the sound of writing, she would keep her attention on grading papers and not me. As I worked out the cost of one candy apple, a shadow fell outside the window. I was trying to concentrate, but something edged at the back of my mind. It was the same feeling I had in gym class the other day when we were stretching on our mats after track. I spotted something wrong with the ceiling, like it was splitting open. But when I blinked, but when I blinked, it was gone. My gaze slid to the window and my eyes slipped out of focus. My vision faded in and out. The world pulsed like a heartbeat, getting bigger, then smaller, then bigger again. The birds in the oak trees stopped chirping. I couldn't even hear the hum of cars on the street anymore. The sound of the ticking clock on the wall vibrated in my ears. Seconds stretched into minutes. My anemia made me dizzy sometimes, but it usually didn't last this long. I leaned my shoulder against the wall next to the chalkboard chalkboard and squeezed my eyes shut, waiting for it to pass. At least it wasn't happening in the middle of something important again. Last week, my team lost the kickball tournament when my anemia struck. Most of the kids didn't blame me, but I still felt horrible. When the dizziness went away, I opened my eyes again and my jaw dropped. I, 
couldn't believe what I was seeing. The color bled from the world like someone was sucking it away through a straw. The window was gray. So were the trees, the sky, and the school flag. At first I thought the sun hid behind the clouds, but this was something else. Something was wrong. Black lightning etched across the sky like ripples moving in the surface of a lake. I snapped my head around to look at Miss Vanderbilt. My heart started thundering against my chest. She was still hunched over her papers, but she was frozen. Not frozen like a popsicle, but frozen as if time had stopped. I wiped my sweaty hands on my pants. Frankie would say that there has to be some reasonable explanation, but nope, there was nothing reasonable about this. This was bad, really bad. Ms. Vanderbilt, I said, my voice shaking. When she didn't answer, I blinked twice, unable to think. That is if someone waved their wand and put everything right, the leaves on the trees changed from ash gray to dull green, to dull yellow to green. Birdsong poured into the classroom again. Cars droned on the streets. Voices drifted in from the hall. My goodness, Maya, Miss Vanderbilt said from suddenly. I didn't mean to keep you late. I jumped so hard that the chalk fell from my hand and cracked in two on the floor. Leaning around her papers, my math teacher frowned at me. By the puzzled look on her face, Miss Vanderbilt hadn't seen the bleeding gray or the black lightning. She'd been in some kind of trance the whole time. If I told her what happened, she'd laugh and say that I had a vivid imagination. I stared at the clock again. It was now 4.15. 30 minutes had passed in what felt like seconds. Maybe I was daydreaming and it was my imagination? I pressed my lips together, deciding to keep my mouth shut. A crash rang in the hallway and both Miss Vanderbilt and I turned to the door. My friend Eli pressed his face against the glass, his fist ready to knock again. He smiled, his freckles standing out against the light brown of his skin. Ms. Vanderbilt shook her head at him. Before she could dismiss me, I shrugged into my coat and threw my backpack across my shoulder. My math teacher squinted at my unfinished work. We'll continue on Monday. Yes, Miss Vanderbilt, I grumbled and jetted into the hallway where Eli, Eli was playing with his phone. A few other kids were in the hall too, coming from extracurricular activities or tutoring, like Eli, detention. Or from extracurricular activities or tutoring, or like Eli, detention. He had a knack for getting in trouble. This morning he put a frog in our English teacher's desk because she gave him a C minus on his paper about famous ghosts. She couldn't prove Eli did it, but he doubled over laughing when she screamed, so he got detention for that. Eli glanced up from his phone and frowned. Was tutoring that bad? I sucked in a deep breath. I'll tell you later. Once outside, Eli and I stood with a group of kids waiting to cross the street. But Zane, the crossing guard, and his bloodhound weren't directing traffic. Instead, he was talking to Principal Ollie, whose gray suit and yellow tie were impeccable. Some parents had trouble remembering Principal Ollie's pronouns were they and them, not him or her. But everyone I knew got it. What's his malfunction? An eighth grader whispered to his friend. I couldn't tell if he meant Zane or his dog, General, who was how or his dog General, who was howling at the sky. The crossing guard's hand curled into fists in his sides as he said something too low to hear. I wondered, no, I hoped that he'd seen something too. No way was I the only one who saw the world turn gray. If he'd seen something, then that meant that I hadn't lost my mind. Principal Ollie patted Zane on the shoulder. He winced and waited for us to cross. The hound stepped howling and wagged his tail. On the way home, I broke down and told Eli everything. He bounced on his toes the whole time and asked me so many questions that my head spun again. Did you feel a cold spirit? Asked Eli, like when there's a ghost around? I shook my head. I can't remember. Do you sense a new presence in the room? We cut across the vacant lot covered in trampled weeds between two buildings. Some kids from Jackson Middle's soccer team, the Jaguars, were dribbling and passing a ball between them as they took the same path. No, I answered, still trying to make sense of what I'd seen. We ducked out the way of a man speeding down the sidewalk on a sky blue divvy bike. He rushed, he rushed to this rental station next to us and shoved his bike into an open slot. Looking at the row of bikes, I kept expecting to see a smudge of gray or black lightning, but everything was as it should be. You know, there's a bike lane, right? Eli yelled at the man walking away. Glancing to my feet, I said, you think I'm making this up? Eli adjusted his backpack straps. Heck no. Earlier this week, Priyanka said she saw two crows talking to each other. 
If something weird happened, people always told Eli. He was the king of weird. What do you mean talking? As we crossed Ashland Avenue, cars honked their horns and traffic stood bumper to bumper. People coming and leaving the shops on both sides of the avenue were as loud and noisy as the traffic. The way we're talking now, uh, Eli said, goofy look on his face. I swallowed the lump in my throat. What were they saying? Eli shrugged. Priyanka said they spoke in a language she'd never heard before. What's your theory? I asked. Sometimes ghosts can inhabit the bodies of the living, Eli grinned, as if he'd been waiting for this moment of glory. I guess they would have wanted to inhib inhabit human bodies, but hey, wandering spirits can be choosy. Priyanka showed me the video on her phone. For a second, you see the two crows facing each other, and then the screen turns gray. Even the sound went out. Gray? I asked as we pass passed the corner store. My eyes landed on the empty crate against the barred window. That was Ernest's spot. He always... He was always around after school, tapping his foot and playing the harmonica tangled in his bushy beard. Not one, not seeing him was one of the more strange things to add to an already strange day. Ghosts seemed unlikely, but at this point, they were better than an alien invasion. Have you heard of anything like this before? No, he said, his voice hopeful, but I'll do some research this weekend. We stopped in front of his grandfather's, grandmother's, sorry, grandmother's three-story gray stone building. Jayla, his little sister, knocked on the window on the top floor and waved at us. She and Eli seemed to share the same freckled face, light brown skin, and hazel eyes. I waved back, and she poked out her tongue at Eli, who grinned at her and poked out his tongue, too. Are you going to tell your parents, Eli asked. I shrugged. Maybe later. I didn't want to worry Mama. Besides, maybe none of it was real. After listening to Papa's stories about his adventures all my life, Maybe my imagination was just as wild as his. I wouldn't tell my parents for now. That was my first mistake of many more to come. Had I known what lurked in the shadows that day, then maybe I would have made a different choice. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, I love a chapter that ends on a good cliffhanger. So that's the first chapter of Maya and the Rising Dark by Rena Barron, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I hope you enjoyed me reading it for World Read Loud Day. Have a great day, everyone. Bye!